Uh, another Flat Earth video. What crazy shit do you have to say now? And the premise is that you suspend a pendulum um, that's free to spin in any direction and you set it off um, swinging and the spin of the earth below the pendulum is measured on some sort of measuring device, in this case a compass and from an observer it appears over a certain time period dependent upon where you are on the earth um, the pendulum seems to be moving around, in this case at the north pole well, you didn't use a straw man argument for this one, so I gotta give you props for that one. Way to go. Um, and they do appear to exist in the northern and the, in the southern hemisphere. And they do indeed, by all accounts, spin anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere and clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Um, it's, it's pretty difficult to, um, or time consuming to actually verify this because you'd have to be stood there for hours on end to see any meaningful change um, but I've got no reason to doubt they work um, and they're said to work using the Coriolis effect or the Coriolis effect um, acts upon them okay that was actually reasonable um, you're making my job kinda difficult you're supposed to be unreasonable so could you start doing that for me, please? Because otherwise I'm going to look bad. So as the Earth rotates to the east, the, um, the, the pendulum wants to stay in the direction that it was originally swung. And the North Pole is still pointing north. So if you measure the angular difference between the first point and the second point, um, shown in green, um, you'll find that that... Um, the angular speed is proportional to the sign of the latitude. Meaning if you were kidnapped and flown to a secret location and put in a room with only a Foucault's pendulum, uh, a clock and a calculator, you should be able to determine um, exactly the latitude that you're at on the Earth. That was really eloquent and well put. Um... I'm confused right now because you you actually said what is proposed by science about the Foucault's pendulum and you even gave us a way to prove that it works. Logically then, if we were to scale this Foucault pendulum up and um, set it over France, so we're going traveling from southern France to northern France, um, a distance of about 500 miles traveling due north um, let's say that we scale the uh, the bob up to the size of a bus and we sit in the bus and we are traveling at a velocity of 500 miles an hour so we're going 500 miles and traveling 500 miles an hour so it'll take an hour now assuming the pendulum was released um, from the south so that it is traveling exactly north after one hour will we still be traveling north or will we be traveling northeast as the full court pendulum would dictate well according to the maths um, at a latitude of 50 degrees in northern France um, we should have rotated by about 11 and a half degrees to the east in our giant swinging pendulum. Oh my goodness, I am so embarrassed. I, I'm really sorry, dude. I I thought you were a flat earther. I saw the title of your video and then I just assumed that you were a flat earther. And I we got up to the wrong foot. I mean, you're obviously not a flat earther. You have given me a very comprehensive look at Foucault's pendulum. You have stated everything clearly and you have used you know, precise numbers, you not using straw mans, you I'm I'm really sorry, I'm really embarrassed. I'm I'm gonna keep watching the rest of your video because this is really interesting, but really take my heartfelt apology. I honestly thought you were a flat earther, but you are way too concise and well spoken to actually be one. So if we now gave the bus some wings and some engines and cut the wire, would it behave in the same way? 
Well, no, it wouldn't. It doesn't. It's not what we see. Um, we don't have to make any sort of correctional track changes to account for the plane's tendency to want to go in the same direction as it was originally launched. Fuck. You know what I find so interesting about your video? Is that I can actually see the moment where your brain stopped working. You were so reasonable. You were using the scientific method to the best of your ability. You have a sound understanding of the Coriolis effect. And then you go into flat earth mode and your brain shuts off. So let's piece together and paraphrase exa exactly what's being claimed by science for the um, explanation of the full court pendulum. So what they're saying is a mass, the more massive the better, moving at velocity above the earth but independent from the earth, will tend to continue on the same trajectory with respect to space, not with respect to the earth. So the Coriolis is just an effect, it's acting on nothing, there's nothing, no force acting to make it go in that, to make it spin. So what I want to know is, what is different about this mass than any other mass on this planet? What is it that's different about a, a pendulum that differs from a plane? If this was an aeroplane, if we go back and say that's the destination, this is an aeroplane, the aeroplane does this. The Foucault's pendulum does this. Why? What's different about this mass to an aeroplane? So let me explain to you what the difference is between your pendulum and an aeroplane. The first difference you should notice is the forces that are acting on the pendulum as opposed to the forces that are acting on an airplane. On a pendulum you have two forces. You have the force of gravity pulling it straight down and you have the force of the string or the cable pulling it up. These are equal and opposite forces. On an airplane you have the force of gravity plus the forces that a friction as it moves across the sky. Uh, you have a variety of wind movement and winds pushing the plane around and you also have the force that is being put on the airplane by its engines. Now this leads me to difference number two. In a pendulum there is only one initial set of energy I guess. There's, you put energy into it by releasing it from its potential state of being slightly up and let it the energy sort of carry it. And then you no longer add any energy into the system. It is energy independent. If I release it from this height and it swings, then when it reaches here, it could not be higher. There is a conversion from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy back to gravitational potential energy and it will come to a stop here. And when it swings back, it should not be able to reach any higher, provided that I do not give this object an initial speed when I stand here. I trust the conservation of mechanical energy for 100 percent. I may not trust myself. I'm going to release this object and I hope I will be able to do it at zero speed so that when it comes back it may touch my chin but it may not crush my chin. I want you to be extremely quiet because this is no joke. If I don't succeed in giving it zero speed, then this will be my last lecture. <laughs> I will close my eyes. I don't want to see this. So please be very quiet. I almost didn't sleep all night. Three, two, one, zero. An airplane is not like this. You don't launch an airplane. An airplane stays in the air because it is depending on the energy that is being provided by the engines. There is energy constantly being added to the airplane. 
So there's your second difference. One has the energy being constantly added to it. The other one only has the initial energy it started with. The third way that a pendulum is different from an airplane is that a pendulum is unguided. There is no one sitting on a pendulum steering it. It is entirely relying on the two forces that I talked about earlier, gravity and the force of the string. That's it. No, nothing else is guiding it. On an airplane, you have a pilot that is guiding it. And that in and of itself could explain to you why the airplane is always heading towards its destination. And it's because it's being aimed at its destination. An airplane is not a shooting arrow that is just free to move independent of the archer. An airplane is a moving object that is dependent on the pilot. I honestly don't know how you could cock this up so badly. But you really did. You had the right idea. You even understand that there is no Coriolis force, but then it's an effect. You understand the math of it. You even demonstrate your proficiency with the math. You even understand that this is a testable effect. You even admit to the fact that we have Foucault's pendulums around the world that all demonstrate the same thing. So I want you to explain to me what happened between this point in your video where you clearly understood what was going on and this point in your video where you clearly don't understand what a pendulum is.